Psychic world. Oh yes, hello and welcome to the Friday. No, it's not that. Oh, uh, the Sunday Friday. The Monday Friday show. What show is this? The Bot Lim Show. The Bot Lim Show. Yay! Yeah, it's catchy. Hey, my name is Ken Boyta, and this lovely man who likes to wear shirts is Julian. And together we are the Bottled Imp. This is Nafas Maren Gerolds get. Oh, that was hilarious. I know. That I was know. hilarious. We are very, very funny people. We're f- we're, the, we're, the stuff we produce I is know. hilarious. Funny looking. Hilarious. It may yeah. not seem it to you. But you know what? <laughs> we don't mind if only three people see it. No. <laughs> we do it for you. For the love. When but talking to the viewer, we're yeah. talking just to one person. Exactly. That's you. Who's that? That's you. Your mate Steve. That's you. Oh, me. Um, but if you do happen to know people that would like this show, share it because it is nice for us to have viewing figures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Am I sounding desperate? No, but I no. think desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stripping. And, uh, you know. Maybe we could do that. Maybe that's what we need to do. We What's need to just do stripping. That, that's your pen, Julian. Thank you. Yeah. That's a little arrow. Not that we really use so, them. No, like, I'm just going to use it now. It's, um, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Anyway, let's crack on because um, time's moving. Yes, we is. are doing a whole show today about the psychic world. There be whatever you said at the beginning. Yeah. What's I that? predict that there's either been an accident it's or enough. someone's on the run. It's a highly expensive soundproof studio. Yeah. It's working a treat. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you need to get your money back. Then. But uh, yeah, so the psychic world. Yeah, what is the psychic, the psychic world? world? What, what, do you, what do you think the psychic world is then? <laughs> And do you believe it? The psychic world. Yeah. Well, you've dro- see, I actually didn't know the theme of the show mm. until just now. No. Like with you, yeah. the viewers. Yeah. It's all, all fresh to you. The psychic world. Well, yeah. Is it fantasy? Would people take offence by you well, claiming not- now that it's fantasy? Because well, people take this very seriously, yeah, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Much like- what I'm, I'm putting out there is that, it, it, that people that take offence, you know, have to really look at that because. It's all. It's everything subjective, and it's, it, for me, it also borders into to religion as well. Now, yeah. Okay, so I believe in the psychic world. Okay, I do mediumship. You know, I, I talk to people that crossed over. Okay, and I know that you don't really believe in that. But I'm not going to get offended if someone goes, "I don't believe it. It's rubbish." Because well, that's your opinion. But by, you but I mean? by calling and, and it fantasy, yeah, are we calling it? Which is interesting because you say you believe it, yet we're now saying well, we're, I'm we're now to calling debate. it fantasy. Is it fantasy? Is because is fantasy real? Well, that's it. Is yeah, <laughs> exactly. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> to some people, this will be fantasy, and that's why I want to open up the debate. Okay, right. We, you know, uh, some religions. If you go, yeah, right. So there's a guy that um, you know he 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 could perform miracles and he could walk on water. He could, you know, all of the things that Jesus did. Some people are going to go, what really that. They actually did mm. that. That's fantasy. That's imagination. That's you know, and and so you think, well, what is fantasy? Fantasy is something that's out of the unusual, isn't it, or, or out of the normal? I, I would say on a, on a really yeah. broad sort of, yeah. without having time to go into fantasy. But do you see what I mean? So I'm sort of saying, you know, because if you don't believe in the Bible or any other religious book or anything like that, you don't believe in that or God. If you don't believe in a God or a God or the God, then people that do, you'd go, well, surely that's fantasy. And it's the same with this. If you say, well, look, you can speak to spirits, surely that's fantasy. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So I'm putting it out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people would what, say it's what, fantasy, yeah. and a lot of people would say well, religion is fantasy, but yeah. there's also a lot of pe- people that would say religion isn't fantasy. Yeah. It's what yeah. they believe, and they believe it to be true. And there yeah. are people who, you know, like psychics and people who, who, who mm. believe they're talking to the dead, who say that isn't yeah. fantasy. I do this, I make a living yeah. out of it. It's not just me conning you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or being, de- or being deluded. So I, yeah. Or being deluded, because... But, but as... Yeah. as as this show is all about fantasy, mm. by talking about this as a theme of it, it's suggesting that we are saying well, it's fantasy, therefore the it's not why, real. 
Yeah, but a, the psychic ability and talking to spirits is used as a common theme in fantasy novels. Right. So yeah. fantasy authors have gone, oh, I like that. Kind of whether or not it's real is kind of irrelevant to a fantasy author, isn't it? Because it's like, that's a cool thing to yeah, have yeah. in your book. Cause it, yeah. And you know, it lends itself so beautifully and, to, yeah. to the, the, the imagination, the made up magical yeah, fantasy yeah, exactly. stuff. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so there's two layers to it, isn't there? Whether it actually exists or not is kind of irrelevant when you're talking about fiction. So we're talking about we're talking about well, I'm talking about everything. Yeah. Things within the realm of fantasy. Well, and as just, opposed to necessarily those people. Well, do you who know what? When we get onto real, the facts, like this we'll find out. Yeah, you're right there. Yeah. And maybe we should. So there you go. But Ding before we go yeah. any further, Happy Imp Day. Not to you. Happy it's not Imp, your day, imp to day to who? To my dad. Your dad? Yeah. It's his imp day today. Yeah, Happy not... inter imp day, mm. Mr. Kraboyter. It was actually yesterday. Was it? Yeah. Oh. But, you know, it's close enough. It's is that, now I'm confused, is that yesterday from when this show goes out? Or was it yesterday no, from I'm today? I'm that it's oh, Monday. Right. Okay. Okay. Honestly, it always breaks the fourth. Yeah. So, Happy um, birthday to you for yesterday, Mr. Kraboyter. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, so happy birthday. Um, we had a great time <laughs> when I went to visit him. No, I didn't go to um, Anyway, but also... Derek Jacobi, also known as... We just moved on from yeah. your dad. Okay. Yeah. Not really a fantasy right? Okay. Derek Jacobi, also known yeah. as... Derek Jacobi. Exactly, yes. Yeah. He was born on the 22nd of October, 1938. Wow. 38? 38. How old well does that make him? That's that quite easy to work him out, isn't it? 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2008. There's 70. 70. No, what's wow. that? 80. <laughs> You do maths good. It's too early in the morning. Yes, I normally write down exactly how it's because then I don't have to do maths. Yeah, you should have put it down and should have, done should have done that. So he's an English actor and stage director as well. He's had an illustrious career. Yes. He? He's been in absolutely everything and I really like him as an actor. Where there's a bit of fancy connection is he was in, he, he was CAD file. The, uh, not that that's strictly fancy, but it's murder mystery, right. medieval setting, yeah. that sort of world. But he was, a, he was an herbalist. He was a healer. So I quite like that. And again, that's a theme within fantasy, isn't it? Um, so I know based on the Cadfield Chron Chronicles by Ellis Peter. And they sold millions. They were huge. Right. Do you, do you, did you read any? Didn't read them, didn't watch the TV thing. Okay. No. <laughs> but also, he was in Doctor Who. Wow. 2007, he was the master. Wow. Slash Professor Yana Lin. Okay. And I actually thought he would make a great which doctor Which doctor himself. was that? He wasn't a witch doctor. No, which doctor was that? I tried to move on, folks. <laughs> you know I'm not going to let that go. Um, he was, what was it? I think it was the David Tennant era, as far as I remember. But he would have made a really good doctor, like a proper doctor rather yeah, than a master. Yeah. And, He's or, a good, fine actor. Yeah, or he would have made a great master, out and out master, because he actually, yeah, anyway, um, they kind of regenerated him. Anyway, and the next Imp Day, Happy Imp Day is Jeff Goldblum. Uh, the Bloomster. The Bloomster. The Goldblumster. Yeah, what a crazy actor what, he is. He's wonderful. He's great. He's beautifully eccentric. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was born 22nd October 1952, an American actor and all round eccentric. Jurassic Park, 1993. Yeah. The Fly, let's not jump over yeah. the Fly. Well, you got it down there, the coming fly, up. But not doing them that, in chronological order. Yeah, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. Oh. And The Fly, 1986. That was what I could tell were more fancy based. So yeah. there you go. The Bloomster. The Bloomster. And the tall guy. Oh yeah, the tall guy. That's fantasy yeah. based. That is fantasy. Anyone that's that tall, like yourself, surely... Must be magical. It's, you're a giant. It's a special magical. Yeah. Must be worshipped. It's because you were fed lots of magic mushrooms. Looked up to. Magic grown <laughs> as a kid. Enough about my parents' upbringing <laughs> of me. Exactly. Parents' upbringing yeah. of me. It, there's a lot there. There's yeah. an ex a lot of explanation with that. So... Are we back on? Well, that's a double we're, bell. We're calling a bellboy, but no one ever turns up when you ring him. I know. So what's going on? I know. They, what's that connected get, to? We should stay in a better hotel. What does it even mean? So first of all, we do have six facts about the psychic world. We've got the bottled imp Kickstarter campaign to plug. Woohoo! The Kickstarter campaign. It's now, campaign. Live. It's now happening. It's definitely you can, happening, you can even go. though we're feeling a little rushed about the whole yeah. thing. No, but you can that's go and back it now, Julian. Oh, it's on. Oh, yeah, because this is coming out Monday. Oh, it's Monday. Yeah, this has happened. Yeah. Keep Go up, to Kickstarter, click the thing. It's a yeah. bargain and it's a wonderful little look at this. Yeah, it's a fantastic deduction fantasy Should we game. mention the stocking filler word? Yes, it's a stocking on. filler. We look are aiming to get this out for you at you Christmas. If you buy this, the goal Christmas. is to yeah. you have it by Christmas. Can't guarantee Fingers crossed. It, but because obviously manufacturing 
Matt yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. But Kedrick Winks, who designed the game, he has done many Kickstarter campaigns before, successful Kickstarter campaigns, and he's the one that's kind of gone, yeah, we should be doable. So it she would make a great I game. I love the way you're putting the whole pass on to him. Blame Kedrick. <laughs> if it doesn't yeah, get up. If it goes anyway, wrong, it does look like it will make will a good stocky filler. We're hoping. Kedrick's yeah. private telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> so look at that, it's a yeah. really good fun game. You know, we've done it's it now, a bargain. Right? Yeah, it's so, out there. So we've got to, let's make it happen. Go to the campaign page. You can read up all about it. There's videos there. Um, uh, there should be a video because <laughs> this is filming this before it's actually about how to play it and stuff yeah. like that. And we've we've uh, we've demoed it. We demoed it at UK Games Expo, and we've got a few clips of people saying how much they enjoyed it. And yeah. they, it, it, this is all genuine. Give it a we're, go. Like, we're not. We're it's not a bargain. Yeah, tell exactly. your friends. To and it is a well. really it'd good be, game. It'd be a shame that if this game doesn't get made. Exactly. We're, we're not making any money out of no. this. We should point that out. No, it's, it's not it's, like we're backing this to try and. Make yeah. It. We just want this made so yeah. we can have real copies of it. Yeah. And it'd for, be a great thing. Yeah. Exactly. And then eventually we'll give them away during the show. And if it's successful, we might get another batch printed, and then you can we'll sell them and stuff. Like that. Anyway, so also we're going to be doing the Great Fancy Challenge. Faust Eric is the next book that I've been reading in the Terry Pratchett's Dix 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 an Aqua Dragons update. What? I know, I know. Oh, I meant to watch it you before didn't watch the show. It. That's oh, what I meant to do. You can't. Oh, oh, that's I'll shame. react appropriately. Yeah, hopefully. exactly. I've got <laughs> we'll a find number out. of reactions. I won't tell, I've not told Julian what's happened. So I've basically if got a wanna, new batch of Aqua Dragons. If you watch the first series, you'll find out what happened yeah. to the last You, you kind of need to, if you want to know what we're talking about Aqua Dragons, you need to just skim over a few episodes of the last series yeah. of this show. Plus, also. We should get on with the actual content I know, that's what I'm saying. rather than talk about the what's coming up because we're halfway through the, the show Medieval already. puzzles as well. So let's crack on. We normally do a... <laughs> no, you don't like the bell. using that. Way over use the bell. Should we ditch the bell or should we continue? We're going to put a poll on the Facebook no, group. No. Keep the bell or lose the bell. Or, or replace the bell for something more appropriate Can I just say, to the theme of the show. My campaign will be save the bell. Save the Saved bell. by, Saved the, by the, the bell. Okay. That's my book, kids. Four. Don't mind the China. Fantasy four. Fact four. Should I do this one? I think you should, because okay. I've not read them at all. <laughs> I've not pre-read any of the facts. Here so we go. Be Belief in psychic abilities, my friend. In a survey reported in 1990, the mem of members of the National Academy of Sciences, all right, sciences, only 2% of respondents thought that extrasensory extra perception had been scientifically demonstrated, all right? with another 2% thinking that the phenomena happened sometimes. So these are scientists thinking 2% thought it happened sometimes. Uh, with another two, uh, yeah, uh, asked about the research in, this, in the field, 22% thought that it should be discouraged. So don't do it. Don't yeah. try and talk to the dead people. 63% no. said that it should be allowed, but not encouraged. Oh, no. Allowed, we'll, not encouraged. we'll tolerate it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then 10% said it should be encouraged. Neuroscientists were the most hostile to the to the parapsychology of all the all the specialities of all the specialities that look at this sort of thing. Right. Yeah, a survey of beliefs it, uh, of the general United States population about paranormal topic was conducted by the Gallup organization in 2005. The survey found that 41% of those polled believed in extrasensory perception and 26% believed in clairvoyance. 31% of those surveys indicate that they believe in telepathy or psychic communication. So scientifically, very low in belief, yeah. but the average punter in the street, quite a lot, 41% thought it actually was real. Yeah, but what does the average punter know compared to the scientists? You'll be surprised. Well, <laughs> interesting. I know, I just thought it's interesting, yeah. you know, and, and I do like it when all this sort of topic gets looked at scientifically as well. Yeah. I like all that. Yeah. What do you want to do next? Oh, well, I'd like to, um, oh, I'll tell you what, right. if we find out what's going on, <sighs> shall we fill with the bit you've all been waiting for? <laughs>
lies before you is the key of Etroth and the beginning of great adventures. But first you must join us in a meeting of sacred magical society members. The key will only work once you have uttered the sacred phrase. It's a kind of security feature, you know. Anyway, the phrase is... Exploring the realms of fantasy. Waste no time, but go carefully, as there are those who wish to stop you. Bit disappointing. Huh, it's one of those high tech keys. Exploring the realms of fantasy. Getting a bit, just, yeah, getting a bit hairy. Is it? What, yeah, I'm hey? just trying to remember what actually happened. We haven't, okay. <laughs> you got a terrible memory. Yeah, I do have a really terrible There you memory. go. Well, you'll have to watch this episode because then you'll find out what happened to I the Aqua Dragons I keep meaning well. to say to anyone who's watched this show and has mm. dipped into the show and has not watched the previous series or just watched a few of the previous series and haven't a clue what is going on with those little things that we've just that you've just watched, mm. you, you, need, you need to go back to the first series and watch... Mm. Either either skim through or watch watch the, watch the, whole, the show. whole show. Watch the whole show. Watch but that. basically, it'll make more sense. Yeah, <laughs> it'll make more sense if you watch that because it kind of well, it kind of led on from from that. Well, it or, or the live show. I think it was the live it was show. In, this one was inspired from the other one. From the live show, yeah. which is an epic watch. But we've done a little mini hour. film through the first series as well, yeah. and maybe we're going to edit them together. If Julian could be bothered <laughs> to the, put them out as separate little films. We'll see. We'll see what we'll happens. We'll see. What anyway. are we doing next? Well. I know, and I'll let you tell me, you're the... Okay, you're the, you're the, I reckon, because we didn't okay. do it last time, we're going to open this really ugly box. Get this crazy-ass box out of our set. Oh, I knew it? I should have got this sorted out. Oh, you're not going to be able to do that. How do you... Hey, jeez, that's a knife. You call that a knife? very sharp. That is very sharp. Be very careful with this that. This is Julian. Julian's actually still part of the Cub Scouts. Um, he loves it so Just much. Just going to leave that open like that? Yeah. Clearly, you're not a Cub Scout. <laughs> Why do they give kids knives? Now this is a, an unboxing. Yeah. This was sent to us wow. by bottled imp viewer and fan and friend of the show, friend of us, Sam. Right. Yeah. Sam. Sam Fords. I think that's how you pronounce her name. I know what she did. Girl Sam, not boy Sam. Girl Sam. Yeah. Oh. Girl Sam. And she regularly watches the the. Uh, she sent us a present. Yeah. The wow. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to be like this. Oh my Look god. Look at these. What the? It's one for you. I don't know what, what? color you want. That's freaked me out. I, I didn't know they were going to be like plasticky. They're what? amazing. They're little imps. They're little they're imps. Little yeah. But they're like, what is that the is material? It's plastic. How? Thanks, How do you Sam, do you've sent us the weirdest thing yeah, I've ever I seen love in it. my life. I know. But look at them, they're oh great. Oh gosh. They are little, rather cool. They are amazing. I didn't know they were going to be out of plastic. I thought they were crochet because Sam did say she was going to send us a present. A crocheted little out of some bizarre but I know, rubber. I love it. I love that. Look at that. Imagine that little limp on your shoulder going, <laughs> going, do it, do it, do it. And then you've got another one going, don't do it. That is, so that thank is you so much. That's very amazing. cool and incredibly yeah. bizarre. If you've got a sort of wacky thing that you do in your spare time and you want to make an imp out of it. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's cruel. We don't have that. But no wonder there's That's a knife. Oh, remember, I've got a knife. Yeah. Right, I will don't. defend our viewers. The worrying thing is you've made them waterproof, which means Ken, unfortunately, is going to play with them in the bath. 
Nothing wrong with that, Julian. You all got a picture now? <laughs> got a picture? I can put a picture up on Facebook if you like. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. We like receiving presents. We do. We do. Uh, oh, cheeky. Right. I reckon we should do. This is. Um, what's it? Is it no, I'm not going to stop until this happens. <laughs> Fancy uh, charity chop find. find. Fancy okay. charity chop find. Chop, chop, chop find. Right, let's do it again. Do you want to hold it and I reveal, or do you want to? Oh, I hold it and you reveal. You hold it, I'll reveal. Mm, oh God, the time just flies past. I don't feel we've done anything yet. We've done nothing. But we could stop on this, and it'd just be the perfect show. <laughs> That'd be the perfect show, wouldn't it? Right, here we go. You ready? Okay. Dilly dilly. Oh, I love those things. I love it's a ruined it's castle. It's a dust catcher. Brilliant. You've got a lot of dust to catch. Yeah, because it's ruined. Like that adds to the atmosphere. Okay, so what do we got yeah, here? You don't want a perfectly clean castle. We've got a not at all tacky little model or something. It's not tacky. This is well done. This is good. And it's a Cornish tin mine. Okay. Ha have a guess it's how much then? How okay, much yeah, would you pay for that in a charity shop? I would shop pay home. probably an unknown amount of money for someone to take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you probably paid, I hope you didn't pay more than 50p for it. Oh, is that the final answer? Yes. Do you want to phone a friend? <laughs> no, I don't. Do you want to phone the charity shop manager? <laughs> yeah. £1.50. £1.50. Did he overspend or did he get a bargain? You know what to do, comment below. Yeah. And this Can was from the charity shop Mind, all about mind, yes. you know, uh, mental health. So I'm putting my glasses on for ah. There you go. I love those sorts of things. They're great. Look at the detail on it, Julian. Look well, at I the detail. Well, I think you've got a model railway. Then, and you build a sort of fantasy model railway mm. thing, then, yeah. then that might be good in the distance because obviously, you know, if the train went past it, you'd go, oh, it's quite tiny. Let's do another thing. I don't see. Okay. You don't, that I'm, doesn't, not, doesn't, I'm not a fan of the dust catcher. You carry catcher. on, I'll roll. You yeah. carry on. What are you I, saying? Well, then? I'm saying I'm not a fan of the dust catcher. Yeah, and ultimately, look, it sits on your shelf. What does it do? What, what does, does it, it do? I look at it I and I go, I, I, I go, I go, oh, there's a dragon, there's a dragon just flown down on it. I better go and. I better go and see if I can find the, the gold that's yes. there. Oh. Yeah. It helps it right. helps your life the therapy, when you're at home look, sitting my there. My therapist walking. said. <laughs> you can just look very, at things. Yeah, very good part. Yeah. That's lovely. Anyway, one pound. I'm just getting practice in for when I'm putting a nursing home. You won't be allowed stuff like that in your nursing home. No. How dare you. That was number six, Julian. Reading out. Number six. I've oh already my. rolled. I'm cracking okay. on. I'm, I'm like the time police this time. You are, you have to be, because look, you can see that yeah. clock tick, tick, ticking away. Number six, it's a chunky one. Nothing wrong with that, do oh. you? Always <laughs> pre-read the things. Nostradamus, oh. predicting many major world events. I just, you see, you printed this at a size where it's just... Oh, it's not it's big kind enough. It's of the wrong. It's either not oh, big enough okay. or it's too... Anyway, one of the most enduring Never historical happy. references... Never to what some consider to be psychic ability is the prophecies of Michael de Nostradam, 1503 to 1566, which makes him how old? Old. Old, quite old. Yeah. Often Latinized to Nostradamus, published during the French Renaissance, Renaissance, Renaissance period. <laughs> I know, I know, I can say that. <laughs> Nostradamus is a controversial figure. He, his many enthusiasts, as well as popular press, credit him with predicting many major world events. Interest in his work is still considerable, especially in the media and popular culture. Yes. Mm. By contrast, most academic scholars maintain that the associations made between world events and Nostradamus um, are largely the result of misinterpretations or mistranslations, mm. some deliberate, mm. or else are so tenuous as to render them useless as evidence of any genuine predictive power. Yeah. It goes on, in addition, <laughs> to belief, in addition to belief that some historical figures were endowed with a, a predisposition to psychic experiences, some psychic abilities were thought to be available to everyone on occasion. For example, the belief that prophetic dreams mm. are common and persistent in many ancient cultures. 
And again, it's a lot of information to sort of digest and yeah. think about. But we don't have time to do. I, I feel with these facts. I know. Well, we can always maybe revisit these. Yeah. Can't we do a chat? Yeah, yeah. Think. Where where we just one needs to about think it. about it. And we just of, have one theme that we or just we chat should about. pre-discuss and think about it. Come up, think all that these facts work. that are short and snappy. Like, when do we have time? Did you know? That yeah, the world yeah. Is no, round? I, did, I didn't yeah. edit. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Are you sure. Well, not, not according to my mates, the Flatlanders. <laughs> right, okay. And anyway, I've been reading... Oh, this is a great segue. Oh, yeah. I've been reading the Discworld. Why? Because there needs to be a ding there. Yeah. Why? Because, you know... Because okay, if there isn't, on? what's going to happen to the dong? <laughs> yes, we'll talk about that later. We this literally is... have no... Have we got a competition to do this? Time? No. Oh, phew. We're this is Eric, or Faust Eric. Ah. This is book... Oh, I've forgotten now. Book... Um, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is book nine. This is book nine. And look at that, it's only 150 odd pages. Oh, I loved it because it. it's like, wow, I can actually really just finish this very quickly. Because um, I'm reading one a week. So if you're reading them as well, read one a week. I'll be doing moving pictures next. Again, this one, it's interesting. I quite like the fact that it's short because he obviously just thought that's all it needed to be. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's right. like, that was the story. If yeah. it, it, Why pad it out though to go, oh, I've got a word count, my publishers want 300 pages, you know. I just thought, yeah, actually, and it probably was better for it. What I do find though, this is a rinse wind, so we're back now with the wizard rinse wind that we first met in The Colour of Magic, the first one in the Light Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, have we met him since then? I think we might have done one more novel with him and I can't remember, but... With Rincewind, one of his key features is that his special abilities is he runs away from stuff. Cool. He doesn't want to get into any trouble, so he cool just power. legs it. Yeah, okay. exactly. The thing with that is that I do find, though, that his character never really has a motivation. It's just stuff, a bunch of stuff happens to him. Right. So there's no real, and then he has to kind of get out of it, but there's no real kind of driving force. So I, I do find it difficult to connect to him as a character because I don't really know much about him. I don't really know what his goals are, what his dreams are, what he actually wants to achieve or not achieve, you know, I don't, there's nothing there, it's just like, oh, okay, this has happened, this is that. Not to say that it's not entertaining. Maybe Terry figured that out as well and went, okay, I've got to wrap this one up. <laughs> yeah. This is going nowhere. Yeah, it's exactly. not working, let's wrap this up. Wrap it. But let's print it anyway. <laughs> yeah, why not? I've got, I've got a deadline. <laughs> I've got to produce 400 of these. Yeah, but, the, but, but what, what Terry Patrick is really good at is bringing concepts. So he, they, they delve into hell, so he talks about hell, but like, Hell is actually all like bureaucracy. That's what hell is, not necessarily right. all the flames and all that. So he's very good at bringing sort of everyday issues and topics into the fantasy genre and putting them into the fantasy genre like, and twisting a trope or a cliche. Right. So that's what, so he's quite good at the big ideas. But with this one, it's weird. It's almost like this was a step back because the other ones, the characterization were started to get really good. You know, you really started to care for the characters. But with Rincewin, I just, not that I don't like him, and I really enjoyed this book. Just didn't connect. Didn't, right. but interesting. I, but, so I'm interested to see further down the line, because he does reappear several more times, what they, you know, how he develops that character, oh, or if we've he does We've got to wrap the show up. But what I would like to do really quickly, because these are literally, Pass me the book, oh, pass me oh, the book. You have to just give the answer to last one. We don't have time yeah, for yeah. a new one. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, no, we don't have time. The no. camera's turned off. The camera turns off, we lose the episode, potentially. No, okay. no, no, we don't. You can't, so, just, you can't just say, ah, I'm not just doing time because I've got another 10 minutes secretly hidden. You, Literally. Yeah, I know you do. No, you're tricky. So, you're we need to say, thing. read the answer quickly from last yep. week's. Um, so, should, have had a, should have had a thing in there. All right. You know, just tell Literally, me what to do. I think you've got about you're, ten seconds. You're to not wrap a boss of me. I know the time is. If you want this show to go out, I am a time lord. Right. So the riddle was very quickly read it out. There is something precious that you own. You take it everywhere. It weighs nothing but carry, uh, but can carry weight. You can share it with someone you ha you haven't met, or even give it to someone you dislike. Others may make more use of it than you do. What is it? What do you think it is? Um, a name or something like that. Boom! Name. But thing is, I did have to question the fact you give it to someone you don't like. Why would you give a? I can call someone names. So, well, okay. yeah. Exactly. Anyway, it's this has been the Bob Show. There'll oh. be another one of those next week. Perhaps. Another one of these next week. We did have one. Yeah, it's all lined up. We've got everything. I don't have to do anything else. No, that's brilliant. Yay! Yeah, Thank you so much for watching. Remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a cheeky little plastic type imp.